All right, it's the end of the session. This is George. Dixie is over there. George was just actually giving a little bit of a demonstration of a little resource guarding. I think George is a little bit insecure, and sometimes when he sees that Dixie gets a treat or something, uh, he growls. And so we're, I'm going to talk about that first, then we'll kind of go through a couple other things. So resource guarding is, although it is, uh, when we look at it, it seems aggressive. It's actually not classified as aggressive behavior because once you remove the resource, the dog typically, the behavior stops. Now, George, I think, doesn't like Dixie getting things that he wants. And it's not that means him he's a bad dog or he's a mean dog or anything like that. He just wants what he wants. And he's got some pretty amazing, look at those whiskers. Look at these things. Um, so what we want to do, the worst thing that we can do is if a dog is worried that we're going to take its stuff, is to take its stuff. And so what you want to do, it's going to be a little bit more challenging for this situation because the guardian has only one person. So this might be something you need to work on. Um, and, and you might also get a treat and train might be something you could do uh, where you could actually uh, treat your dog remotely. So what we want to do is when a dog is resource guarding, what we want to do is, is provide him something good. So in a, uh, in a, tour, a typical situation, what I would do is I'd have somebody have Dixie on leash so we can control Dixie and then have her approach us. Now, when George stares at her or freezes, you're going to lay down and get you out of the shot, buddy. That's okay. Um, so when, when, when he gives his first indication that he's uncomfortable, that's when we want to have that person stop take note of the distance between them and George. Let's say they stopped and when they got to 10 feet, that's when George went, Arr. we never, ever, ever correct a dog for growling. A growl is the antithesis of aggression. A growl is a dog's way of saying, I disagree. If you correct or punish your dog for growling, eventually it will start just going straight to a bite. And although he has gotten into a couple fights with Dixie, no blood has been shed, which is a good thing because it uh, means that he's trying to communicate, but he's not taking it's a, it's a good thing. So, all right. So basically what we want to do is, let's say at 10 feet, that's when he starts growling. So I'd have the person walk away with Dixie, come back and approach, and this time stop at maybe 11 or 12 feet. So we stop before this dog, George, or excuse me, Larry, has the, uh, the, feels the need to communicate, you're getting too close to my stuff. In this case, a dog can guard a person, place, or thing. In this case, he probably was guarding my lap. So she approached and he growled and said, back off, this is my human. So what we want to do is we say like 10 feet. So we have somebody walk away, approach with Dixie, stop at 12 feet. Then either I would give him a treat or the person there would roll a treat towards George, uh, towards Larry, and then walk away. And then they would approach from this angle. Then they approach from this angle, this angle, this angle. We want to approach from all sorts of different angles. Dogs don't generalize well. So we want to kind of approach from all different angles at 12 feet. And then after we've done that, if he seems pretty relaxed, then we repeat, go to the first position, and this time we approach and we stop at, we, at 11 feet. We get one foot closer. And provided he doesn't react or growl, then I would give him a treat, or somebody would roll a treat towards him and walk away and then approach again from all those different angles. Now, if George reacts at all, we, it invalidates it. So we can't continue if he's growling. If he growls, that means we push too far. So the whole point of this is we wanna have him practice having the thing approach, something good happens, he doesn't react at all. And gradually we collapse that distance until eventually the person, the dog is right here and he's like, when Dixie approaches, when I have stuff, it's a good thing. It doesn't mean I'm losing out. It means I'm getting more stuff. And eventually we wanna do, do what's called extinguishing the behavior so that he never resource guards again. Um, now, a little sol uh, uh, a solution we came up with, I'm gonna go over here in a sec, but I wanna go over warning signs for dogs and he's doing one of them right now. He's staring at her. You see that very intense, you can't really see it as well because, he, but he's a terrier. Terriers are very determined. So this first uh, signal is usually a stare and often it's kind of like they're kind of do to do And a lot of times it's company with a freeze, not always, sometimes. Um, dogs are normally wiggly and jiggly. You normally see, should see their uh, loose body, um, breathing normally, their hair, their, their eyes and their, uh, their head and all that fun stuff is normal. Uh, so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to, when there's no resources around, look at George and I want you to, I'm going to break it down into categories. And so I want you to spend a week on category one, then a week on category two, three, and so on. So the first thing I do, I look at is the dog's overall posture. Is one of its legs like, look like I'm coming towards you, but I'm pushing back? Or is one of its legs hanging out away from the side? Um, is the dog leaning one way or the other? So you're looking at kind of the dog's posture. And if the dog is leaning away from something, it's pretty obvious it's not comfortable with it's leaning towards it also obvious what it's thinking. So the idea is to just recognize. So we want to see our dog in a neutral body mechanic, which means that all four paw of hands are underneath him. There's wiggliness, there's relaxation. So we're, 
<laughs> we have a vole. Um, and so we're going to watch that. And for a week, we're just, uh, and the first one, seeing how the dog's got its feet underneath is pretty easy to see. But I want you to look at both dogs and are the, uh, are the legs spread a little bit wider. And so once we get a feel for how they should stand normally when it's a relaxed situation, then if we start seeing the leg off to the side or in a weird position, then we start noticing there's something else afoot here. And we start looking at the big picture. Is, is, he, trying, is he leaning towards Dixie? Is he leaning away from the cat or whatever the case may be? So that's the first category is looking, and I guess you wouldn't have to really look for a week, maybe spend about two or three days looking at both dogs to see what their neutral body mechanic is when there's no resources, there's no uncomfort, and then how are they carrying themselves. Second thing I do is I look at either the head or their rear end, uh, specifically the tail. So for the, uh, the a dog, we look at their ears, we look at their nose, we look at how high their head is and the angle of their head. Proud, confident dogs have nose in the air, insecure dogs have nose down. So from the horizon, the middle point. So basically, if you start seeing the head comes, the nose comes up a little bit, or the head goes down, the ears come forward, or they go out to the side, um, the dog starts baring its teeth or licking its lips, yawning. Uh, these are all indications the dogs communicate something. So um, licking the lips is, uh, is more of, I'm, I'm uncomfortable, I disagree with something. Yawn is kind of a little bit more of, uh, well, I've seen it in a couple of different capacities, but a lot of times it means a, kind of a relieving of, of pressure and tension. Um, potty. A little potty break by Dixie. Um, so um, also seeing the dogs breathe heavily or hold their breath. Uh, those are good indications and getting stiffness of the body. Another one that Laura mentioned is the whale eye, which is they're kind of looking their big eye and they're looking off the side and you see a lot of white in the eye. That's why we call it a whale eye. And so if you start to see these, uh, so now we know what their neutral body mechanic is, what the ears look like when the dog's relaxed, where the mouth is, how the mouth is. Oh, another one, this, this is my dog Max's face. See how his mouth is open? That's kind of a normal body mechanic for dogs. If you see the dog going from an open mouth to a closed mouth in a stare, that's a big warning. So I want the guardian, one of the things that is key for the guardian is to rec learn to recognize the dog's body mechanics and then start seeing, oh, the dog went from wiggly and jiggly to, uh, you want to get down, buddy? Um, wiggly and jiggly to close his mouth, stared, and got stiff. So those are an indication that the dog is uncomfortable. So if we can redirect the dog, which is what I'm going to talk to you about here in a second, we can help them get them out of it. Now, he is a terrier, so when it's uh, like hunting moles, uh, voles, and things like that, it's going to be harder to get his attention. Terriers are very determined. Um, so uh, we went through a touch exercise, actually, Laura did. And so one of the things I'd like to uh, have the guardian do is practice this. Now, the guardian uh, is decided on the word of good as a marker. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to, let's say this is Dixie's head. I'm going to flash my hand. Their eyes are going to be very attracted to movement. So just don't go like this or put it right in front of their nose. Flash it and hold it here. Touches the nose. Good. And I reach my treat pouch and then I give the dog a treat. So and then I'm going to flash with this hand on the other side. And then she turns here and comes over here. Good. And I reach and give the dog a treat. So they touch first and they get it. Now let's say that uh, this is the dog's head. Let's say I flash here. Doesn't do anything. Well, I pop, pull back and I chop a little bit closer. And I actually like to chop, if the, this is the nose and the head is facing forward, I like to chop on either side. The dog is turning its head to the side instead of just going forward a little bit. And for, uh, for Larry, you might do a little bit of forward, but eventually we want him to have to turn his head to the side. We want him to move. The whole point of this exercise is to get him engaged with us, also be able to move him around uh, and increase his confidence in a number of other benefits. So what I'd like the guardian to do is practice having the dog, t uh, Dixie, touch her hands and only her hands. Larry, we'd like to him do the same thing, but with her feet. So um, what you're gonna do is, and I would have both dogs separately, because again, there's a little bit of a resource guarding issue. Not an egregious one, but uh, we just don't wanna have any more of that, um, uh, more of those fights. Maybe we give uh, Dixie a bully bite in her kennel or in a different room or outside, and or we go out somewhere else with George and just kinda t hold your foot up, like I'm trying to show you in the camera. And as soon as he touches it, yes, or excuse me, good, and then we give him a treat. So then if we start seeing that George, or excuse me, I keep on calling him George, but if Larry starts staring, well, we can go like this and hold our foot off to the side and Larry comes over and we say touch or target, whatever the word is you want to use. So um, eventually I would say touch and then the dog touches me and then I say good and then I give it a treat. Well, would you drop the good at that point? For if you're touch. trying to assign a mark, a hand, so if I want to say touch, it, goes. it touches and then I would just give the reinforcer without seeing you can still say good. I usually, a lot of people will drop the good in between, uh, but you can do either one, whatever you're comfortable with. 
down or he just laid down. So that's a little passive training. We'll talk about it in a minute. So, um, so I want the guardian to practice this in different rooms in the house and all over the place so that you can get, just go and hold out your hand like this and the, Dixie will run from 10 feet away. You hold your foot out like this and uh, Larry runs and uh, touches. And so th think of a word touch or target and start, once the dog are doing it consistently, say that word right before you do the exercise. Touch. And then he touches you and you say, yeah, good. And then give him the treat. So the order is the command word first the dog does the action, and then uh, at, uh, while it does the action, it gets the marker, which is yes, in this case, good. And then they get the reinforcement, the reward, the treat, the pet, the attention, or whatever it is, the end. So think of it kind of in that order. Um, so um, I want the guardian to start recognizing that if you see uh, Larry is staring or offering in those signals that I talked about earlier, and you might also want to look at getting a book uh, on or a DVD or look on uh, for a DVD on dog body language, and it'll kind of talk a little bit more in detail the things to look for. But once you know what the signals are and you see that that Larry's staring, um, right there he just gave you an example off camera. So uh, Dixie was on her guardian's lap. She jumps down and and she kind of turned around and came back and and, and Larry went like this. And he kind of oscillated back down. So when he gets stiff and kind of leaning forward, that's kind of when we want uh, to pay attention. Thank you. Um, and so, um, all right. So um, we also touch, and there we go. Now make sure you, uh, when you're doing that one, you might like actually take a treat and you might even rub it on your, he on your, on your sock a little bit. And that's going to cause him to want to do and so you want him to go there without the treat in your hand okay. or on your foot so if you put a little smell there and he comes and touches it he's accidentally doing it then we say good and we give him the treat from somewhere else mm -hmm. after a while he'll start doing that more and more often um and then george will be like or or larry's gonna be like wow she's really into my into feet but whatever i, I get the treat from doing that now right now it's uh, he's kind of distracted with uh being outside and there's a vole around so this is not a good time to try to practice you want to try to practice when the dog is is amicable and can be open to things don't try to force it uh, and if you get frustrated or the dog gets frustrated make sure you stop you always want to end on a good one wow she, dixie's very comfortable she's going to the bathroom number two times um and so the idea is uh like i said to get them out of trouble before they get into trouble now the very first thing we talked about in the session was about stimulation. These are older dogs, so I don't need a ton of exercise. That's kind of an interesting move that she just made. Um, and uh, But I think a lot of mental stimulation will help them. So uh, you have a bunch of Kongs, fill them up about halfway or more. Um, scent games, Google scent games. Um, get some treat dispensing toys. Um, they have all sorts of puzzles, their shapes, and you have to move levers over or slide things around or turn them around or roll a ball a certain way or whatever. There's a whole bunch of different ones out there. Now, because the dogs have a potential resource guarding issue, I'd like you to order an X-Pen, and hopefully by the time you watch this, you've already ordered it. It's on Amazon. It is on sale today. And so just get one about 30 inches or so, and then basically you put it in your living room, and George can be in it this time with a bully stick, and Dixie's outside, or Larry, excuse me, and then Dixie's outside with a bully stick. So we know that they're safe and they can't get to each other. Now, if Larry is staring, if he's giving any of those signals, then we would probably want to do what I started talking about at the beginning of this video. That's how you could do this. You could put him in there with a bully stick and then approach with Dixie. Now, it's a big area, but you could double over the sides to make it into a smaller area. And then so he's got a bully stick and then you approach with Dixie and, he, and he, Larry growls. We stop, we take note, we walk away, get a good value, high value treat. We approach, we stop one foot away. We th toss the treat over into the fence. So now when Dixie comes, it's a good positive thing. Um, all right, let me see. We also talked about, uh, so uh, for the, uh, uh, for the uh, games, search Chewy and Amazon. And you might just go to Google and just search for uh, dog puzzles uh, and uh, trees dispensing toys and find some good options for there. Um, yes. Now remember when she, uh, Dixie's right here at my feet, when she is whining and whimpering, wait for a second or for her to stop. Or when, if she doesn't, just tell it, sit, ask her to do a couple things. And once she sits and asks her to sit over here, do a couple things, and then get up and take her for a walk or take her and play, do the Frankenstein chasing her around the house or whatever those things are. So when she's t manifesting, I know it's frustrating when you hear a dog whimpering or whining at you, but get like, thank you, just on cue. But instead of listening to that, because she's practicing doing that, eventually we give in or we get frustrated. So the very first time she gives you one of that, then be proactive. And again, you might want to think about keeping a journal for a week or two, writing down every time she whimpers, write down that time. You might find every day at 4.15, she starts whimpering. Well, then we can start exercising her at 4 o'clock or give her a puzzle at 4.05. And so we beat her to the punch. We're proactive about that. Uh, and that makes a big difference. Um, so um, let me see. We'd also like them to practice being together in that X-Pen, like I mentioned, with bully sticks or, uh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I guess I kind of already covered that. 
Okay, we also talked about uh, the importance of rules and structure. A lot of us think of rules as a negative, and so we don't have any rules for our dog. A lot of my clients, when I tell, ask about rules, they say, but it's a good dog. Well, rules are not there just when they're good. Rules actually are things to help the dog see us acting like a leader. And the more that we have status in terms of that leadership, the more the dogs can feel more comfortable. So we don't want to, anything the dogs are doing that we don't disagree with, we're kind of agreeing with. So if he's staring at, at, at Larry's staring at Dixie, we need, that's our responsibility to redirect him and to redirect her and to get him out of doing, and to get him doing something else. Now we talked about um, uh, Premax. Premax are examples, uh, and, and you haven't taught him the shoe yet, yeah, so I would, again, teach him that first. That's okay, I like where you're thinking. Yeah, and yes, the side, I think it will be a little bit better as well. So, um, or if you want to give her one of these and have her rub one of those, I think that you'll get a better response if you rub yeah. that on the side of your foot. That has more of a stink to it. Yes. Um, and when it, comes, when it comes to food, remember the smell is the most important. Temperature is number two. Taste is a distant third. So, um, all right. So, uh, and try to avoid petting Larry when he jumps up on you as well. That can be a little bit confusing in the dog uh, world. There we go. All right, um, so uh, we talked about premax. Premax means a, a less desirable behavior earns me a more desirable behavior. Example is I go to the door and I tell Larry to sit. If he, Larry sits, I open the door and let him out. So he did a more less desirable behavior sitting and then that got the door to open. So that will condition him after a while just to sit to ask to get, if I can go out the door. So um, you could also do this, uh, tell him to sit before you let him out of the kennel. Tell him to sit uh, before you put the leash on. Tell him to sit before you prepare their food. Uh, or before you put their food down. So the idea is we're adding a little bit of a condition so the dog has to do something for us to get something that it wants. And after we do that enough, the dog's more happy, Good. is happier to do that. And it's shifting the leader follower dynamic because I can't tell you what to do anymore. I have to ask. Um, let me see. Very good. Uh, George is learning. Um, okay. So um, also uh, something you might want to do is go to YouTube and look up some positive dog training tricks. Teaching dogs new tricks and commands gives you different ways to redirect their attention. Oh, see the wall? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the lawn. I can't believe my eyes saw it. Um, Laura's going to save it. Um, the, uh, we have a terrier that, yeah, that will not go very well for the vole if, uh, and that's a pretty brave vole out in the middle of the grass. Okay, so um, we also uh, wanna look, uh, we want, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, we'd like to get snuffle mats and start feeding the dogs out of snuffle mats. You can also get the Omega Paw Treat Ball and there are other games that you can use to feed your dog its kibble out of. And so that way, the more they earn their food, uh, earn their food the better about themselves they're gonna feel. Um, we also talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose, and so I said, you can tap like that, but I would kind of move your foot away and then move it back towards okay. it. There you go. Um, and Laura can give you some more pointers on that one, uh, when she's done uh, uh, vol safeguarding. Um, so basically petting with a purpose is if the dog jumps up on my shin or nudges me or barks or whines for attention, it's asking or telling me what to do. If I pet it, that's gonna make it do that activity some more. So what we do instead is when the dog nudges you, tell the dog to sit or to lie down. Don't tell it to shake. And if it sits or lies down, pet it, remember, whenever possible, pet under the chin. And uh, try, there, that was a great hand target uh, for Dixie. That was awesome. Um, so we want to avoid petting up here. You can pet anywhere else, but try not to avoid, try not to pet over the chin, uh, over the head. But if all things are equal, try to pet under the chin. That facilitates that nose up and they feel good about themselves. Their nose is in the air. We want their nose to be in the air. So basically, um, if, the, if, you're telling, if the dog tells you what to do now, nothing happens. But if you tell the dog what to do and it does it, then you pet it. Now remember, if you're gonna pup, if you say sit and it sits, then pet it right away. If it doesn't sit, playing hard to get works great for dog training too. So if sit, you won't sit. I lean back in the chair, pull out my phone, watch some TV, uh, do some other things. That makes the dog more motivated because I didn't get what I wanted last time. Next time I'm gonna try something different, and eventually the dog starts sitting to prepay for that attention. When the dogs do, make sure you pet for that. That's what we're looking for. That's a great thing. Now we also went over passive training. Passive training is uh, a word that I've come up with. It really just is a form of operant conditioning. What passive training is, is just really wait, and the guardian just did a great job. She's trying to get uh, George to target her shin, and Dixie came over, and the guardian recognized that and stopped and redirected Dixie away. Because that, if they get too close together over a resource, that's probably when a fight's gonna happen. So, for, uh, like right there. Uh, so, um, and this is, uh, at first when you're doing this thing, you might like give one of the dogs something to do with yeah. a bully stick or something like that, if you need to. And you might also put them on the other side of the uh, X pen and then practice with George with her on the other side of it. So she yeah. practices not, but we just don't want her to be whining and whimpering for it. 
All right, getting back to passive training. Passive training is essentially petting the dog when it does the things that you want. So every time the dogs come to you, pet it and say, come. Uh, or excuse me, say come and then pet it. Every time the dog sits right before the butt hits the ground, if you can see, if you can see it, say there. sit right before the butt hits the ground and then sit and pet. If you can't see it beforehand, just pet them at the same time or immediately after. Remember, dogs need repetition, consistency, and good timing. You have two seconds to correct or reward a dog. So you want to make sure you're doing that very consistently, very quickly. Um, and if they don't do it, then just show them. I want other things. But by paying attention to these things, after a while, the dogs start paying attention to us. So um, you can do this for all sorts of stuff. I like to do this on walks when every time the dog looks up at me, I say eyes and I give it a treat. Well, the first couple of times it does it, it's accidental. But after about, I find it usually about six to 12 times, the dog figures it out and just starts looking at you the whole time. And then you've created a command where you say eyes. Okay. So let's say that Larry is looking at a vole over there. You say eyes, okay. looks away. Now he's probably not gonna look away for a vole, but you can redirect the dog's attention that way. Um, so uh, remember the order is, we're gonna say the word before the dog does the action. Usually it's because we're luring the dog in a sit. Let's say I'm gonna lure the dog in a sit. So I hold the treat here and I go over its head. And let's say this is the dog, this is the spine, and this would be the butt. So I raise it, go like this, and the dog raises the head. When it gets to a certain level, it puts its butt down on the ground. As soon as it's about to put it, I would say sit, then the butt hits the ground, then I give the treat. I would say good, or excuse me, I would say good and then give it a treat. Let's do that again. So I lure the dog in a sit right before its butt hits the ground. I say sit, the butt hits the ground. I say good, then I give it, uh, uh, now let me try this a third time. So I lure it up I, uh, into a sit. So I say sit when the butt hits the ground. I, uh, right before the butt hits the ground. When the butt hits the ground, I say, good, then I give it a treat. So the action, the command word, uh, or excuse me, the command word, the action, then the reward. And if you're gonna use a marker, it would be command word, command word, yes, or your marker word. That's okay, Laura, uh, but feel free to get it. Um, and, then the, uh, and then the reinforcer, which could be a treat or it could be affection from you. Um, and so there we go, she's got some peanut butter. Uh, now, peanut butter, I probably wouldn't recommend for this. Uh, you can do it, but peanut butter, I'm going to be licking the whole time. What we want the dog to do is touch and then get the reward. Okay. Touch and get the reward. I like what the guardian's thinking because we told her to rub a little bit of a scent on there. The scent would be a residual, there. Oh, a little bit of a touch. And so that was a resource guarding over me. And it wasn't super duper egregious. And Dixie does a good job of staying away, but that's why at the beginning of this video, I spent so much time going over dog body language. So you really need to start to learn because that was a very minor thing. But I think that it's attention, I think is a big thing. Also, George, uh, Larry was guarding uh, treats as well. So uh, if you follow the instructions above, let me know. And if it continues happening, we might set up a follow-up session just to work on the resource guarding where we bring another person in and recreate the situation and describe, do what I described at the top. But I think if you take that X pen and do it into a small area, you could have him in the middle of it and then approach with her and just get to the point where Larry's like, I like it when Dixie approaches because that means I'm getting good stuff. Now, if you have a questions or any problems, make sure you reach out to me. If I don't hear from you, I assume it means everything's going great. So uh, please reach out to me. I don't care if it's six minutes after I leave or if it's six years from now. If you have questions or problems, let me know. I don't charge for phone calls or texts and I live nearby, so I'm happy to come by and help you. Dixie, George, or George, Larry. I was on the Three Stooges kick today. Can we come up here? Oh, this is my buddy that I've been referring to as George, but his name is actually Larry. And Dixie's over there doing some hand targeting. And this is both dogs' roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.